Hi, everyone. Hey. Thanks so, for us. Uh, Shreyas, how long do you want us to take up? Um, I think we have five to ten minutes for Lightning Con, so... You're standing between us and lunch. Fair warning. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, and you're you're standing between me and lunch, so I'll make it quick. <laughs> oh, we're all equals here, right? All right. So, so uh, Saul, I'm going to present uh, a slide just to introduce it, and then if you want to hop on and do the demo, uh, that way we can keep it really short here. Uh, and I'm going to share a slide and share. It. All right. Can everyone see that? Yeah. Uh, so where this came from is uh, obviously data sets are a first class entity in scientific computing, data science, and AI. However, uh, until now, data sets are not known to Jupyter broadly in, in the sense that they're known to the Python code or R or Scala or C code running in a Jupyter kernel, but the Jupyter system itself knows nothing about data sets. And this has been creating a lot of challenges for us as people build extensions for JupyterLab in particular that work with data sets. So for example, uh, Saul, uh, Grant Nestor, uh, a master student of ours have created uh, tools that can do data visualization using Voyager or Plotly in JupyterLab. And those tools need to get tabular data sets into them. And notebooks have tabular data sets in the form of data frames. There may be tabular data sets on the file system. There may be one in a SQL database. And we were having to start to write a lot of really brittle, basically N squared type of code that, uh, you know, so this, this data visualization tool knows how to pull tabular data sets out of notebooks. And this one knows how to pull it out of CSV files. And so to address this, we uh, wrote a grant. Uh, this is funded by the, the Schmidt Foundation. Uh, and uh, this is in collaboration with NYU and then uh, also Saul and others at Quantsite. And so we're building a data set registry API for Jupyter and in particular Jupyter Lab. So this is in the JavaScript front end side of things. And here a data set is basically a, a URL a MIME type that says how that URL should be interpreted in terms of the type of data, and then the JavaScript equivalent of a void star. Um, it, we're also extending it to include notions of hierarchy and search, and then uh, this will all be extensible uh, in a similar way to the Jupyter output system that is also MIME type based. Um, and uh, on top of this, there's a set of conversion APIs that know, basically know how to map between different MIME types in an efficient manner. And the idea here is that uh, someone may write an extension that, that knows how to work with tabular data sets, but there's dozens of ways that tabular data sets can be encoded. It can be a CSV file, a URL that points to a CSV file, a tabular data, uh, a, a table in a SQL database, a JSON file. And so, uh, JupyterLab extensions can register converters between different MIME types, and then the overall system knows how to find, uh, traverse that graph and find, uh, basically get you from a source to a target MIME type so that individual extensions only need to say, hey, I know how to consume this MIME type. And then the data registry and the converter APIs can be responsible for uh, basically figuring out, can we get this data set into that needed MIME type? If you're familiar with uh, Odo on the Python side, lots of similar ideas uh, in this. Um, to emphasize that the, our notion of data here is entirely abstract and would include any possible notion of data ranging from files, remote endpoints, uh, data uh, APIs that expose uh, larger than memory data sets, um, uh, essentially anything that you could possibly imagine uh, could be a data set in this context. Uh, a key point is that this is not a data catalog. Uh, this is a system that existing data catalogs can use to 
to get the data into Jupyter in a meaningful way. Uh, a data catalog is not required. There's other routes uh, of getting data into the system. Um, and so the, the goal here is to enable this deep integration across different components within uh, Jupyter Lab uh, as it concerns data. So with that, I'll let, uh, I will stop sharing and Saul can Sweet. take Thanks. it from there. This is a great introduction. Can you guys see this? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, the data registry provides a bunch of hooks for extension authors, like Brian was saying, but it also. Uh, Can you talk loud? Please speak up. Yeah, I'll turn up the mic or something. Uh, it, am I loud or am I cutting out? Right. Now it's just soft, so if you just speak okay. up. Um, so the, it also comes with the built-in uh, UI, the data explorer, so that we can see uh, what data sets we have registered. Uh, and one thing that we've added recently is the ability to have nesting. So we're, here we're showing the local uh, file system as a nest data set. Um, and we can find uh, a data set inside of it, like the CSV file, uh, and view it in our built-in grid viewer. Um, so the idea here is that if you had a database open or, for example, some other kind of data uh, catalog, then it would show up in, these, in, in, the, in the data sets you have available to you, and users can then browse that and find um, actions to do with their data set. And that all of this is extensible um, so that it, it composes nicely together. Um, and it, yeah, just to add, like we're working on this very actively. So if you'd like to collaborate or uh, have more questions, um, you could. We have a GitHub repo on the Jupyter Lab uh, namespace, the Data Explorer. Um, yeah, and we're, we, we'd love to chat more in depth about these ideas. So I think we actually maybe were talking about a breakout on very similar topics. Um, so we should coordinate on a good time, but it would be great if one or both of you could join that during either today or tomorrow's afternoon session. So right. tomorrow would be better for me, at least. Yeah, so that's fine. I think uh, we, we, I was hoping Rick from Globus could also be there. So maybe tomorrow would be good for that. Yeah, let's coordinate over email about a time. Okay. Yeah, we, we, we would love to work with others on this because this is this is a type of thing that if we can get a broad consensus in the community that this type of approach makes sense. I think it'll really uh, unlock a lot of different groups to begin building things that will interoperate with very minimal uh, friction. Now that you work with Ian on something very similar, Lindsay's taking up some of that work. I think it'd be good to stick up and not do the same thing over again. Great. But yeah, let, let's coordinate on, on email then. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.